Dear citizen of Nashville, on July 18th, 2020, Islam is going to detonate a nuclear device in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville was not the only city Ellen White identified as being struck by catastrophe. Oh, come on. So by now you've heard of this ad that was published in the Tennessean last week by this guy warning that Islam is going to nuke Nashville in the next few weeks. He mentions the Seventh-day Adventist Church and Ellen White as if this was some prophecy that she made. And everyone is up in arms about it, so I just want to say two things about this. First, I hope you know this guy, and I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to give him publicity. I hope you realize he's not an Adventist, doesn't speak for Adventists, does not represent Adventists. He was kicked out, apparently, a long time ago, and he doesn't speak for our church, nor is he right about some supposed prophecy that Ellen White made about Nashville. Just for the record, I want to read the statement put out by the North American Division of Seventh-day Adventists whew, in responding to this thing, okay? And it says, we are deeply disturbed by the hurtful ad published by the Tennessean. The claims made against the Muslim community have caused pain and strife. We soundly reject these hateful words. We need to be clear there is no connection between the Seventh-day Adventist Church and this group. I can say it even more strongly. This ad was rhetorical terrorism. It used a distorted ideology to justify creating panic and fear in a large population. It was unjust towards Muslims, who honestly have put up with enough in America the last couple of decades, and it may even put Muslim lives at risk. And it was dishonest towards Adventists specifically and Christians in general as well. And plus, it's just stupid. It was stupid of this dude to write it. It was stupid of the newspaper to publish it, and they acknowledge it. Now, with that out of the way, this leads me to a second point, which is that this guy may not have been a card-carrying Adventist, but this is an Adventist problem. This is not the first time someone who calls him or herself an Adventist has done something like this, okay? These people, these kind of people, they get billboards or newspaper ads, they call out the Pope or Islam or abortion clinics or whatever, scarily frequently. I don't know if that's a phrase, but it should be. There's also a bazillion YouTube videos out there by these kinds of people. And these people are not rare. They just rarely get noticed by the public. And here's what I'm getting at. Not all of these type of people are ex-Adventists. When they are ex-Adventists, it means some local church has done their job. But some of the people who think this way are still Adventists in good standing. And if you're an Adventist, chances are you know the type of person I'm talking about. They make some screwball comment in Sabbath school about Islam or Catholics or gays or whoever, and you're just like, oh gosh, well, that's just Brother Jim being Jim, you know? He's always trying to share a video with you or he's going to peddle some self-published nonsense to you because, well, let's just say you don't engage because, frankly, it's a waste of time to deal with these people. He has a million Ellen White quotes out of context and will write you really long emails with all caps, and it's just like, who needs this in their life? Now, Adventist churches, by and large, we, we fail to confront these types of people. We don't want to attract these type of people, but we do. And they spout off their racist conspiracy garbage in church, and we just kind of like sit there and take it. And I'm not saying all of these guys will inevitably run, in, run a newspaper ad like this dude did, but is that really the point? I mean, I get it. Churches don't like to discipline people. We want to believe that God can change them, but let's just stop right there. Because I think we need to be more proactive about confronting this kind of behavior in our churches. I think we need to be more proactive about what we stand for as local churches. We stand for the gospel and for the proclamation of the three angels' message and for the soon coming of Jesus. And if you want to believe that Islam is out to kill us all, well, if they want to believe that, just keep it to yourself. But it will not be spoken in this church. Yes, these people are screwballs. Yes, Adventists don't endorse this kind of nonsense. But there's a reason they are attracted to Adventist churches, and we need to own up to that. What happened in Nashville is not our fault. It doesn't reflect our values or our beliefs, but we've had enough of these screwballs who claim to be Adventists that we have to wonder if we can do more to stop it. I think we just got to come to terms with the fact that, that these types of people are attracted to Adventist churches. Why? Why? Why do they look at Adventism and say, 
that place seems safe for my views. And, you know, I think we got to have a serious conversation about why people think that way. Again, doesn't mean it's all our fault. Doesn't mean it's all our fault. But I think we got to figure out what it is that they see in us that makes them think their conspiracy nonsense, their Islamophobia, their homophobia would be at home here. And I think if somebody thinks that way in our local church, we as the congregation in that local church, we as members of this worldwide faith community need to make it very clear to them that those particular views are not welcome in our church. We can love that person and we should love that person, but those views, you do not bring those here. You do not bring those here. You can believe whatever you want to believe privately, but you do not. Do not bring those into Seventh-day Adventism. It does not, they do not uh, represent who we are or what we believe, and do not brand them as, as authentic Adventist beliefs. Well, anyways, I don't, I don't want every vlog to be a rant, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I do want to end on a more positive note, so I just want to end by encouraging you guys uh, to, be your, to be the keeper of your brother and sister, not just to kind of come down on them when they're wrong about something, but, but we need to take a more active role in each other's lives. Uh, and if I say something that's just like way out of line, I hope somebody will come and tell me in love. I hope a board meeting to disfellowship me is not the first time I'm hearing that people disagree with my views. Okay, I think we need to, in love, to talk to these people and to take responsibility for them so long as they're a member of our church and, and not just kind of distance ourselves from them and say, well, they're just weird, but what are you going to do? No, no, no. We can do things about this. Uh, we can take responsibility for them and, and be a family. And sometimes that's going to mean that you kick people out of the family. And that, that's okay. In fact, that that's the, the right thing to do in this case. Um, so just my two cents, be your brother and sister's keeper, be your best self. Don't, don't lower yourself down to this level in trading fire with fire. Um, stay above that, but stay engaged in trying to help these people. And if you cannot help them, then just wish them well somewhere else. <laughs> All right. Whatever you guys are doing today, just know that you are loved and remember that the best is yet to come. <laughs>